Because, you know, love of God is just surrounding this place this morning. I just love him, and I know you love him back. Hallelujah.
I'm glad I have your love. So y'all know I, my son did not get his singing from his daddy. He got it from my wife. Oh yeah, right there, sister. Love. Come on, let's thank God for teacher Linda Lucas. Wow. Love. You hear people sing good, you want to sing with them. Somebody says, stay in your lane, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. Wow. Somebody tell your neighbor, I'm so glad I have your love, Jesus. Tell your, tell your neighbor, you have Jesus' love today. This is part two. Last week, we ministered to you about knowing your identity. Do you know your true identity? If you don't know your true identity, then you will not discover who you really are. Amen? And this is it's critical. It's absolutely uh, one of the most, if, I would say is the most important thing for you to know who you really are, not who people say you are. Amen? So again, I want to just thank God. I want to thank God right here for this uh, family that just came in. Would y'all stand, Sister Sher, on your husband and, and everybody else on that road? They come in all the way from Indianapolis. We want to take them for granted. God bless y'all. Every time y'all come through these doors, it bless me. They got 300 churches in Indianapolis, I know, but y'all come across that highway to come to New Life Church of Faith in Danville. And that just blesses me. That encourages me. So God bless y'all. And Sister Cheryl, y'all all may be seated, but Sister Cheryl's been attacked uh, in her body. And just, you know, again, she presses her way. Amen? She's been through so many things, but she, she is a fighter. She's a woman of faith. Amen? So we thank God for her. We thank God again for the basketball team today for the coaches today for you being with us today it's a blessing everyone that's here today all of our brothers and sisters from Nigeria we thank God for you and uh, we just thank God for everyone today that's here and so you need to know your true identity amen it is critical it is critical in order for you to have a successful life and so I want to I want to say to you you are made in God's image. Some of you are looking for the big screens today. You're going to have to hopefully have brought your Bible. They're going to have the camera on me, but it's not going to flip and flop like it normally do. Just please, if you have your Bible, follow me. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. You are made in God's image and in his likeness. Can somebody shout Glory. Now, marinate, mar meditate, slow down, hold up, listen. You are made in God's image. You are made in his likeness. Whenever you think about image, it's a reflection. It's reproducing itself. And God is saying to us, he made all of us in his image and in his likeness. When you see somebody that resembles their parents or their family, you hear, you know, comments like, boy, he spit him out. He is a spitting, she is a spitting image of their mother or father or their family. Amen? And so God says in the scriptures here, if you'll get your Bibles and, and go with me in Genesis 1, and the 26th verse. Now I'm going to tell you that you don't have to learn the whole Bible in the sense that before you come to Revelation, but if you'll just meditate on, uh, you know, just some verses in the Bible that God will direct you to, it'll bless you. Amen? And so Genesis 1 and 26 through 28 is so important because it's the beginning of the Bible. And, uh, you know, right beginnings have right endings. Amen? If, if you don't start right, you, 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 you're not going to end up right. And a lot of people haven't been, you know, 
fortunate enough to discover who they really are and their true identity. So a lot of people are on the wrong path. And that's why things are not working out because they are choosing uh, to identify with things that are really not who they really are. And there's an influence by the TV and the movies and your culture and your family and all kinds of uh, uh, outside things or, or, you know, trying to help you shape your identity. But it may not be your true identity. Amen. So I would rely and I would go with the Bible. I haven't found a but I have not found another book that has helped me more than the Bible to be able to understand life and to, to make sense of life. And so I trust the Bible 30-some years now to be the one that has helped me the most to have the best outcome for my life. So in the book of Genesis, the first uh, uh, book of the Bible, in the first chapter at the 26th verse, we need to see when God made man, what was his intent? When God created them, what was in the mind of God? What was going on with God? Why did he make man? Amen. And so in the 26th verse, it says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So when God made man, he made man in his own image. In other words, God was reproducing himself. God was reproducing himself. I said God was reproducing himself. When he made them in the garden, he made them like himself. He made man like himself. So whenever you think about God, what do you think about God? Do you think God is great? Do you think God is awesome? Do you think God is wonderful? Do you think God is powerful? Do you think God is smart? Do you think God is, 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 is a great? Tell your neighbor that's who you are. Hello? See how quiet y'all got? Because, see, y'all been thinking low of yourself, and now God wants you to think about how you really are, and it's going to take a minute for you to catch up. Because the truth of the matter, you just read it for yourself. You didn't have Bibles. And it said, and God said, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness. In other words, God is saying, however I am, that's how you are. See, most of us have put our value based on the house that we live in. Most of us identify ourselves with our physical culture. With our physical DNA, your dad, your mom, your family, your skin color. Most of us are focusing on the outside, but you really understand how many understand God is not a human. But God is a spirit. And that God has placed himself inside this body, which we call an earth suit. Yeah, it's, 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 it's your robot. It's your movement about the earth. This is how you get around in the earth. You get around in the earth because you have this body. But you are not a body. You are a spirit man that lives in the body. Every time the spirit leaves the natural body, you can't even get the eyeballs or the lens to close. They got to close them. Whatever way that body falls, when that spirit leaves it, the undertaker got to hurry up and... Because it can't do anything anymore because the God in it left. Y'all ain't y'all, y'all, y'all gonna work with me today. See, most of us only see ourselves as a physical being, but you are a spirit being and you live in a body and you have a soul. You are not a car because you drive one. When you get in the car, you don't become a car, you are the master of the car. And when you tell the car, go, it goes. Amen? And I know some of us like to tell the police it was the car's fault. See, the car, it, it, just, it just kept moving. Amen? Even for preachers, preachers are talking, well, I was about the Lord's business. You getting ready to go to jail, preacher. You just might well just pull it on over like the rest of them. Amen? You are not a 
body by yourself. You are a spirit man and you live. Okay, I'm, I'm redundant because I know some of our hairs are thick. I mean, I know it's just good to repeat stuff until, you know, it finally gets in. And so 1 and 26 says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And he says, so God created man in his own image and in his likeness. Uh, in, his, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them. Uh-oh. And God did what? I said, and what did God do to them? And God did what to Adam and Eve? Come on, somebody shout glory. Uh-huh. God blessed them. Mm-hmm. Marinate. God blessed them. Tell your neighbor, when God bless you, can't nobody curse you. When God blesses you, nobody can curse you. And when he, I'm I'm, going to keep bringing this back because I'm going to take us somewhere in a few minutes. But you must first establish the fact that the first reason and why God created man. And God created man and gave man dominion. That dominion means authority. And he gave them dominion. He gave them authority. And he gave them this authority over what? The fish and the bird and the cattle and the creeping thing and everything that moved in the earth. God said Adam and Eve, they were in charge. He gave them the authority over everything. Amen. When he first made them, there was nobody in the earth that was more powerful than Adam and Eve. Amen. And then God said after he created them and he gave them that dominion and that authority and then God blessed them. Hallelujah. In other words, God said what I said that you are, I just now declared it because when God bless you, can't nobody curse you. Nobody can make you less than what God has made you. Now, the truth, most of us don't believe who we are. I know know right now y'all are like, well, yeah, most of us don't believe who we are because we've been told so many things that's not true. We are believing a lie instead of the truth. And if you believe what is not true, you'll get what's not true, even though it's not true. But because you believe it's not true, you will act like it's true. Some of y'all will catch that in a minute. If you don't believe you can play basketball, you never would have signed up for the basketball team. You never would have decided to go to college. You never would have decided to be a a successful person no matter who you are. You've got to first believe you can do a thing before you ever try a thing. If you don't never think you can ever do it, you will never try it. But you got to at least have enough faith to believe that I can do it. So then once you do what you do, Then you go, hey, how you like me now? How you like me now, huh? Tell your neighbor, you are made like God. You are made in his image. Tell your neighbor, just like God, is you. Just like God, it's you. I ain't trying to pump y'all up with a lie. I'm going from the Bible. And he said, make them, we're going to make them just like we are. It's, I'm, I'm going to make them just the same way we are. And somebody saying, God is great. And God, God is brilliant. And God is a creator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you're wonderful. You are, you are great. You are awesome. Everything you can think about that God is, whatever excites you about God, ought to excite you about yourself. Because whatever God is, that's what you are. If God is wonderful, then you are wonderful. And if God is brilliant, and if God is powerful, and if God can do anything, make them just like So most of us don't know who we are. 
Because we live like mortal men. Sister Kelly, I'm going to keep on changing this. Kelly! That's, that's daddy, y'all. Y'all don't know that's daddy. Kelly! That's, that's her husband. I like to imitate him. I like him. Get it, get it, get it. That's daddy. Right there. That's daddy. Right there. Anyway. Do y'all know we have to not sing dead songs? The old African slaves. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Won't you come by here? Somebody needs you. Somebody needs you. Look at them. The Africans is already. Hey. Swing low. Sweet cherry, coming for the carry. Ah, oh, them are dead songs. Them are songs of pitifulness. These are songs of people who don't know who they are. These are songs of people who think they are defeated people, that they have no God on their side. But God said, I made you just like me. You are more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in this world. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Somebody said, just like God is. I am. Satan's assignment is for you to never discover who you really are. People are drinking and drugging to try to medicate themselves to get away from the reality that ain't even not their reality. They are trying to escape a picture they painted in their mind from what has been said and what has been done to them. But the truth of the matter, you are a powerful being. You're so powerful, there ain't nothing in the earth that can touch you. I read the book, it said, and I give you authority over everything that moves in the earth. Nothing that moves in the earth can be more powerful, and it is not more powerful than you. But if you don't believe it, they put on all these spooky movies. Woo. Woo. What's that? Satan trying to make you believe he's more powerful than you are. Come on, y'all tell the truth. People have taken advantage of you when you don't know who you are. Can I get a witness in this place? When people don't really, when, you, when they figure out you don't really know who you are, they will take advantage of you. They will use you up. They will abuse you because you don't know who you are. They'll tell you no other man wants you. No other woman wants you. You are never amount to anything. You can't succeed. Are you in so-and-so family? Are you such and such a family member? You can't do it. Why? Because the devil wants you to believe who you are not instead of who you really are. Because if you ever believe who you are, boom. You'll crush his head. What a man never wants is a woman to discover who she really is. Y'all ain't going to say nothing now, men. Oh, I'm going I'm to I'm bust your player cards out now. Ta-da! Let me tell you something, girl. Let me tell you something. Now I'm going to come around here. I'm going to do this for you. Now I'm going to tell you. Garbage. Some women, they play that role of innocent. Hey, excuse me. She's a straight up witch. I mean, she'll destroy you. She get in there and mess you up. If you don't know who you are, people will take advantage of you. Can I get a witness? Come on, somebody say, I'm created in his image and in his likeness. I love this 28th verse. It says, and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Whew. Somebody say, take authority. Somebody say, everything that moves in the earth has to submit to your authority. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus, I command you and it must obey your command. But if you don't know who you are, come on now. 
You guys, I am the same way. When you see the police car, you just automatically say, oh, there go authority right there. I'm just getting ready to do something to me. <laughs> I just getting ready to punch it out there on 74 and there them cherry tops or whatever it is coming. I act saved for about five minutes till the police gone in. See, y'all won't tell the whole truth on y'all self, but amen. The truth. If you have authority, you do not have to do nothing but show up. Little old hundred pound police in the car. Little old uh, my, one of my best friends, Pastor Bourne's little wife, little daughter. She works in D.C. in Maryland. She about a hundred pounds, but she is a police. And I look at that little girl. I'm like, girl, are you crazy? Do you know this is criminals up there? That little girl knows she has the whole United States government behind her when she step out of that car. Boom! You don't want them to bring them bats down. Yeah, you know we got some things they call. Step bomber, you don't want them, them drones, you don't want none of that stuff coming around. But the truth, what am I trying to say? You and I have been given authority, and we have been given the authority to make everything come under the authority of the name of Jesus. Not one thing moves in the earth, and I like this whole verse. I'm going to read it again and again and again and again and again. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish and over the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing. That's what I like. Somebody say every living thing. Somebody say that means every demon. If you believe there's an evil spirit, you have authority over the evil spirit. If you believe there is fallen angels, you have authority over the fallen angels. Come on here. Anything that moves upon the face of the earth, when he created Adam and Eve, he gave them the legal authority to say, bow down. Hallelujah. The fowl of the air and every living thing that, every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Tell me, say everything is underneath me. If it's foul, if it's evil, if it's wicked, if it's demon, if it's the devil himself, he must bow to my authority. Amen? Why? Where did I get it from? God gave it to us. Now, I need to help y'all because a lot of us are still living in Adam's sin. That's why the message ain't really hit you yet. Because most of y'all still think about Adam and Eve messed up in the garden. And they did. They committed high treason. They broke. God's word, and they lost their positions. Ask your neighbor, but have you heard about Jesus? Hallelujah! Have anybody heard about Jesus? Has anybody heard what Jesus did? Mm. Second Corinthians 5 and 17, real quick. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So you can't be the old man and the new man all in the same breath. Either you believe you are still the old man, even though you're the new man, then you're going to still get the old results because you don't know who you are. So most Christians are still having a mindset about the old man because of what Adam and Eve done. But the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Everybody ready to shout? Is everybody ready to shout? Somebody said, Jesus put us back before they messed up. I said, Jesus, put us back where God intended for us to be before Adam and Eve messed up. Jesus gave us back what was stolen in the garden. Every man that is in Christ, he is a new creature, and everything that is old is passed away. Have y'all heard the word redeemed? He's redeemed us. 
He's redeemed us. In other words, he has put us back to where the first Adam and Eve were at with the dominion and the authority and the power and the blessing. Tell your neighbor, I'm back. I know y'all acting like, yeah, I'm back. Back for what? Back. <laughs> we, the beginning, he made Adam and Eve the big dogs in the earth. They messed up. Jesus came in the earth and got back everything that was rightfully theirs. He put the blessing back on them. I said, Jesus put the blessing back on them. I said, Jesus put the authority back on them. Jesus gave them back the legal authority. And this is it. This is it, y'all. Because if you read in the scripture what we just read, after he created in Adam and Eve, he said, now make babies. And he said, reproduce some more folks like yourselves. I'm making y'all like me. Then I want y'all to make some more folks like me. Tell your neighbor, we some of them cheering. Amen. Okay. How many know a dog is 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 a dog when it's all over? Still a dog. Might be a black dog, white dog. Might be a short dog. Might be a skinny dog. Still a dog. There is no difference in God what he created from the beginning. We are sons and daughters of the most high God. We are not anything less than what he originally made us to be. And so you must begin to understand who you are in order to become who you are. You must begin to embrace the fact of who God made you to be instead of what folks say you are. Oh, shout in this place. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise today. Uh, Okay. Okay. Somebody said read it. And then read it. And then read it. And then read it. And one day, you're going to believe what you've been reading. Because faith comes by hearing. See, your faith ain't there today. I'm busting y'all out with all this new information, and y'all trying to go, well, let me see. Now, Anna, and they went in and gone, and then the, day, the devil came in. And I, <laughs> Come on, church. Jesus has restored us back to when the original intent of God. What was the original intent of God? That they have dominion and authority and power. And the Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And all things old have passed away. And all things have become new. And so you are, and I am, right now, the most powerful beings that live on the earth. Somebody say your true identity. Now look in your Bible. Some of you have a Bible. Go back in that same fifth chapter and look at the 14th verse. In 5 and 14 it says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. When he died for one, he died for all. Tell your neighbor that's you. He delivered you. Because all of us needed to be delivered. Amen. All of us needed to be delivered from the sin of Adam and Eve. I'm not turning you there, but in the fifth chapter around that 18th verse of uh, Romans 5 and 18, and it said, by one man offense came on the whole world, and by one man deliverance came on the whole world. If one man put us all in trouble, the Bible said one man got us out of trouble. Now, if you don't believe you're out of trouble, you're going to still leave like you're going to still live like you're in trouble instead of walking around. Boom. I don't have to move for no devil. The devil moved for me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing now. I read the Bible and he said the very gates of hell will not prevail. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that means we are his body. And that means he has given us authority that no demon, no devil, no body, no rich, no authority is more powerful than we are. Who is that for? Somebody say everybody in this room. Did he die for one or did he die for all? 
Now, if you don't never receive it, that is not God's fault. Hello? Some of y'all good parents in here, raise your children right, and if they go astray, it ain't your fault. If you provide them with all the necessities of life to be successful and they still choose to rebel, it's not your fault. If you show them the way and they refuse to go in, then it's not your fault. I'm broken a lot of days for people who ain't broken for themselves. I'm crying for folks and upset about folks and they won't even cry a tear for themselves. You steady trying to pull them out of a negative situation and they pulling back. Ah, ah, ah. When you get to the jail, hello, preacher, click up, don't call me. I try to help you on the street. So tough, you so bad. Why is it the first person you call soon you get to jail or get in trouble is mommy and daddy? But when you being told the right thing to do, no, no, I'm, I'm getting out of here. No, mama, I'm, I'm out, I'm out. Click up, help. Mommy, daddy. They got, they got, that's why I don't like sagging because sagging is an indication of being uh, bound by chains. Because see, when you sagging, you, It's hard to get around when you're sagging. <laughs> oh, come on, let's give God some praise for District 118 and uniforms. Come on, shout hallelujah. I'm telling y'all, this is good news. I was in the high school Thursday. The whole atmosphere shifted. Them kids was looking at themselves like, wait a minute. I ain't no thug. I ain't no hoochie. That whole place shifted. We got over 5,000 students in public school in District 118. And from the kindergarten all the way through high school, they were in uniforms this last week. All over our town, they could see our children getting out of school. And they were looking like they were about the business of education and not the business of some rapper, drug dealer, dope they don't know their true image. Somebody said needs us, they need us to help them. Don't reflect something you don't want to become. Why would you want to look like something you don't want to become? You are already practicing. Nobody takes you serious when you sag. Nobody takes you serious when you dress like a hoochie. Nobody takes you serious when you don't care for your own appearance. You ain't got to look like a preacher, but you ought to look like you're going somewhere. I ain't never been to McDonald's and seen those children in McDonald's, young people working in there, they act like they were mad because they had a uniform on. They say, do you want some fries with that shake? I say, yeah, give me some fries with that shake. And they all buzzing around in that place, and they all in uniform. Everybody can't be a Viking. Everybody can't be a palm pet. Everybody can't be a cheerleader. But how I many know everybody's on an equal level education playing field when they walk into District 118 from the kindergarten all the way through the high school. And so those uniforms made a shift. Okay, well, nobody say clothes carry spirits. I get harassed, Dean Lyle, when I dress down. I'm still Pastor Miller, but when I put on a ball cap and some jeans and tennis shoes, they look at me differently. And he a crook. <laughs> That's what happens. I went to the bank, and I was dressed down, and I was in my jag, and I had on my ball cap, and I was real relaxed, and then I had a government, uh, United States, um, uh, 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 United States, uh, what do you call it, money order. I'm not, just, just got it from United States post office, $500. I said, put that in my savings account. She said, no. She said, uh, we don't know if that's good or not. We're going to need 24 hours to check you out. But I'm saved, so I didn't go all the way black on her. I just, I went and called my other banker. I said, tell me if a, a money order is good after you get it from the post office. She said, immediately you get it, it's good. So I went home and got my suit on. And I came back to the bank. I said, I'm going to see the manager. Uh-oh. 
Uh, what's wrong? I want to see the manager. Anytime you got a situation, don't deal with peons. Go straight to the top because peons act like they're running, so they ain't running nothing. Get me who in charge of this place. I love to make other folks do this. Now, sir, we saw me. We, we. You better get to dancing around here. You better get to doing something because clothes make you out to be who you not. And then, oh, I got to hurt you church folks because some of y'all show perpetrating wearing a long dress and a three-piece suit. Oh, y'all didn't think I was coming down y'all street. Oh, yeah, a lot of church folks, they want to get all, all churchy. But just got up from the hotel, motel, Holiday Inn. Put your joint out in the parking lot. I'm going to have to get high to hear this today. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Higher than Georgia Pine. Don't get caught up in what folks look like. Because you may judge them wrong both ways. Do you hear me? And God said, I made you in my image, in his likeness. That's who we really are. But if you don't see yourself like a God, oh my God. You don't see yourself like one of God's children. We got we to gotta go. Okay. Look at this again. Look at the 14th verse. For, God, for the love of Christ constrained us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Look at this. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Tell your neighbor, quit trying to live like you're the only one he died for. So tired of these church folks think they're the only one going to heaven? This depends on what church you in. It's a, always there's a wall up from folks that go, to, that go to church. How kind are you to sinners? When is the last time you hugged a drunk? When is the last time you embraced a prostitute? When is the last time you shook hands with a homosexual? When is the last time you hugged a racist? When is the last time you made yourself aware of the fact that if it had not have been for Jesus on your side, You've been towed up from the floor up too. You did what you shouldn't have done. How is it all of a sudden now you can't understand how sinners act like sinners? You ought to tell them sinners, yeah, I'm telling you, you look like, act like, just like I did. Come on over here. We got some more room. Come on over here. Instead of act like, oh my God, what are they doing? You ain't never told the truth. Somebody said, God, ain't, God died for everyone. Somebody said, he died for everyone. He didn't leave nobody out. God does not have any stepchildren. He does not have any have children. He has all of us or he has none of us. So if you've experienced his love, don't be trying to act like it's only for you. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, look at this, y'all. No, wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Wow. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Tell everybody you should not identify with Jesus based on the outer appearance. This is at the elementary level. This is elementary. Why do you think God didn't put Kodak in 2,000 years ago? Because all of us in our little selfish, prejudiced way want Jesus to look like us. Well, I just know Jesus is going to be a brother. <laughs> oh, no, senor, he is Pancho and Cisco down at the Rio. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, man, let me tell you, man, he's a, he's a Rastafarian, man. 
I don't have all of it good, but you know what I'm trying to say. Huh? Oh, no, no, no. Jesus is a Nigerian. No, he's a Jamaican. No, he's a European. No. He tells us his my God, he never created us by the houses that we live in. He is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. And I have met my brothers that are black and white and Hispanic and, and Nigerian, and their spirit bear witness with my spirit, and we can worship together, and we can praise God together, and we can live together, and we can love together, and we can respect one another because it's not based on the outside. Is based on the inside. I am a spirit man. You are a spirit woman. And we do not live by the flesh. Shout glory. Shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor I'm in. I'm in. I don't care if you don't like it. I'm in your family. I'm in your family. I'm all in your family. I'm in the human family. I am a son of the most high God. And we are all sons and daughters. Shout glory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know that truth, people can punk you. They can make you feel like, no, not you. No, no, you can't get in my little clicky, clicky, clubby, clubby, clubby. I don't care. All these church folks, when y'all get out of church, and go to one of these restaurants, some other church folks going to be there, and they're not going to embrace you because you're not in their church. They in their church, they say you in your church. So when you don't go to their church, they don't receive you because you're not in their church. But how many know there ain't but one church? It's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no denomination in Jesus no non-denominational because that's still a denomination. There is no denomination in him. You ought to get delivered enough. Two weeks from now, two weeks from now on Wednesday night, we're going to have a Catholic lady come here. And she's going to teach us, not teach us, but she's going to share her history of when she went to the Holy Land about Jesus. You know why I'm going to let her come and present her information and and share with us? Because her spirit bear witness. Y'all, 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 see, some of y'all are so religious that you can't worship with Catholics. And some Baptists can't worship with Methodists. And Methodists can't worship with Church of God in Christ. And Church of God in Christ can't worship with a Nazarene. And a Nazarene can't worship with Assembly of God. But if you get born of the Spirit and not of the flesh, then you can worship with anybody. Hallelujah. If you go to the Catholic Church, they're talking a lot about Mary. So when you're in Rome, you like the Romans. What y'all doing? Y'all getting down again? How many times y'all gonna get? When you go to the Pentecostal, you might as well just. You go to the Methodists, we're kind of reserved. Presbyterians don't even say nothing. Listen, y'all. I'm going to let y'all in on my secret. I be checking people out, and when I get around, I act just like they do. I be all deep acting. I don't know nothing. I just be acting like, that's what they said. That's what I said. You don't go to another church and try to make them worship God like you worship God. You ought to be saved enough that you can fall right in there and worship God just like they worship God. And if they don't really make a lot of noise, don't bust out the whole service by you trying to let everybody know you Pentecostal. <laughs> Honda da da bo, Shanda. Woo! Honda Civic. Honda Civic. Cadillac. Cadillac. What the... <laughs> I mean it. Them people are saved. They love God. But how I many you know they're going to bounce you out of their church? They got some deacons there, man. They really bounce us. Uh, we're going to need to talk to you over here. <laughs> and you see your little legs in the wind. You know why they're taking you out? You're like, <laughs> yeah. You got two out of the club. Now you got two out of the church. <laughs> okay. On the real note, it's the truth. Do not think that this 
great thing God has done has anything to do with your flesh. And Jesus is not about the flesh. It's all about the spirit. You must be in Christ, a new creature. All things old have passed away. All things have become new. Come on, somebody say, I'm back. Somebody say, I'm back. Jesus brought me back. He gave me back my dominion. Okay, one more. We're going to let you go. Well, about three or four more verses. Look at this. Again, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus. Somebody said reconciled. Somebody said brought back, restored. That's what Jesus done. He reconciled us. He brought us back and has given to us the ministry of reconcili- reconciliation. Somebody said you ought, to try to one, you ought to try to win somebody for the kingdom. You ought to tell everybody, come on, come on and be reconciled. Come on to where the Lord has already done for you. Amen. He said to wit that God was in Christ reconciling who the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Somebody say he did not come to save you so you can still be bound by sin. This is what God is. He's so awesome. He said, I know you are a sinner, but I love you anyway. Wow. See, because most of us love people based on what they do. We reject a husband and a wife. 50% of getting divorced because they decided you are not meeting my needs anymore. You're not doing what I need you to do. This is what I love about God. I got to get us out of here. This is what I love about God. Me and my wife seen an international preacher, national preacher, uh, children. And they were on the stage. And they were singing. My wife is a real a musical person. She knows music. So she immediately could tell these children could not sing that good. Why were they on the stage? Somebody said they daddy. Own all the microphones. Own the building. Own all the equipment. Tell your neighbor God got you up on the stage. Not because you the best. Not because you can do anything so great. But because you are his child. And when you are a child of God. God says favor rest on you. Because you my child. I'll take you to the front. When everybody say leave them in the back. I'll move you to the front. No matter who don't like it. Because when your daddy is in charge of everything. He tells other folks. Get out of the way. That was mine. Now, listen. Y'all sit down. Because y'all may not like me after this. Y'all sit down. I'm going to let y'all go. Are y'all saved enough to handle this? Okay. Okay. Listen, y'all, y'all, come on now, listen. Because it's your child... Just because it's your child. <laughs> Come on, little miracle. <laughs> Come on, little Baba. Come on. Everybody say, what in the world? No, everybody in here. You want your child up front. You, isn't he cute? No. He, he ain't even cute at all. She ain't cute at all. Come on, little miracle. <laughs> you talking about getting somebody blood pressure up. Mess with little miracle. <laughs> Everybody want little miracle to sit down, but it's yours. Go on, little miracle. <laughs> Little June bug, come on. <laughs> and how many know you get a dirty look if you say anything? If you look at them funny, they look at you like. <laughs> On the real. How many know that's how God is about us? He don't care who don't think we can sing or we can't do this and we can't do that. But because Jesus died on the cross, he put you up front. Come on here. He's redeemed you. Not because you are anything more than anybody else, but because you are his child. Come on, rest on your feet.
Rest on your feet. Tell your neighbor I'm back. Please, this is homework for this week. This is homework. Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28. Read it. Read it. Read it. You know what? You've got to read it till you believe it. You will never go for what you can go for and you will never have what you can have until you believe you can have it. A lots, lots of people will say to you, you can't do this and you can't do that. We don't know, but y'all have to make it up in y'all's mind, young men, if y'all going to win the national. Amen. Don't matter what nobody else say. What, what, what? Everybody watch this. Who? Magic ain't got nothing on me. Be like Mike. You better be like me. What? Huh? So what, LeBron is in Cleveland? Stay on over there. Amen. What doctor, what lawyer, what professor, what engineer, what scientist, what astronaut, what governor? Who is it in this room that may not ever, ever understand who you are until you begin to pray and say, God, reveal to me my true identity. What is my ability? It's no less than what God says. Okay. I don't have time. John, the third chapter. Nicodemus was the leader of the, 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 the Pharisees and he came to Jesus by night because he seen the power that Jesus was demonstrating and he came to Jesus at night and he said, Jesus, now I know you are the son of God or you are the Messiah. I need you to tell me how you do what you do. And Jesus told him, I'm paraphrasing, Jesus told him, ye must be born again. Jesus is a perfect example of who God was in the flesh. Jesus became the second Adam to show us who we are. We are the children of God. So God is a spirit. So everybody in this room has had a natural birth or you wouldn't be in the room. Your first birth is a physical birth. It talks about in the scriptures in that third chapter, you're first born of, you must be born of the flesh and of the spirit. You must be born of the water. How many know nine months you swimming? That's why they throw little new babies in the water. They go to swim. Like, you drown me. I've been doing this for nine months. Your first birth is in water. Your physical birth is in water. We fight in the church about how to baptize people. And God is never saying that which is born of the flesh is spirit. He said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Ye must be born again. You must have an encounter with God for yourself. It's worth seeking God, the preacher said, I must be born again. You must begin to pray and ask God for yourself. I want that second birth. I want to know my true identity. And my true identity is greater than my physical identity. My family's DNA is not anything, uh, uh, you know, to be this re- uh, um uh, to disregard in the sense of appreciate and be proud of, but a greater than that is your second birth. Come on, bow your heads all over the room. Come on, ministers, join me, please. Thank you, Jesus. For your visitors today, we roll out the red carpet because you don't have to go to Hollywood. Jesus already shed his blood. And he says, whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be